Welcome to Insights in Business. We are coming to you live from the Tidemark Theater. I'm Mary Ruth Snyder. I'm the Executive Director for the Campbell River and District Chamber of Commerce. I am so very pleased with my special guest today, Christine Lillyholm is joining us from Stonehouse Teas. Christine, thank you so much for joining us today. Good afternoon, Mary Ruth. Thanks for having me. I'm telling you, 25 years. Mm -hmm. So congratulations on that. Thank you. But before we get into the fact that it's your 25th years, let's start way at the very beginning. How did you go from where you were born to here? The short version. Okay. So where were you born and raised? <laughs> let's start there. Short version. Wow. Um, so I'm originally from Manitoba, actually. So oh. yeah, born um, just outside of Winnipeg, small little town um, outside, of, uh, outside of Winnipeg. And then how long were you in Winnipeg before you moved to the next location? Before I escaped to the beautiful weather of BC. I did not um, say that. <laughs> so I actually uh, lived in Manitoba until um, my first, uh, I went to college for two years. So I went all through elementary, high school, um, and then I did two years at Red River Community College in, um, in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And then um, I moved out to uh, BC in 1993 and um, came out here to begin my culinary career. So when I finished cooking school, it seemed like the right step to come to BC. BC was really growing in the food industry, yeah. um, and I wanted to be part of that. So um, yeah, I moved to the island in 1993. Now, which part of the island did you land on first? I started in Victoria. And how mm -hmm. long were you in Victoria? Victoria, three and a half years, and then up to Campbell River. And oh, then really? Right to Campbell River? Then to Campbell River, then I went down to Parksville. Okay. And then I came back to Canberra. River. So I've kind of been up and down the island for the first, I would say, 10 years of my culinary career um, before settling back in Campbell River in 2004. Now, when you were in Victoria, who was it that you were working for in Victoria? So Victoria, I worked for the Oak Bay Marine Group. Oh. Um, so when they first took over the marina restaurant yes. in Oak Bay back in 1993, I started with them back then. So you would have been working with Greg Hayes. Yes, exactly. Wow, yes. <laughs> way back, but yes. Yes, way mm -hmm. back. So, um, well, I, how I know Greg is a whole other story. Um, now, how long were you with them? Three years? Uh, three and a half years, and yeah. And, yeah. Half. and what's interesting is my chef in Victoria was Matt McDonald. Oh, okay. Um, and he is now uh, works for Berwick. And he was in Campbell River for a lot of years. Oh, okay. And he's now in, um, based out of Qualicum. But yeah, so isn't we've it, crossed path over the last 25 years as well. Isn't it funny the way that paths cross and people come back around that you know from, you know, distant past? Mm -hmm. Now, which of the restaurants in your career had the biggest impact on your development professionally? Wow, so many, um, because I had so many different experiences. Mm. Um, I've been very fortunate to um, build and develop kitchens, like from the ground up. So when I worked in Parksville, I worked at Pacific Shores, and it was when they were first opening the kitchen. So right down to um, purchasing all the equipment need, menu planning, design, that kind of thing. Um, I spent five years at April Point, um, so late 90s, early 2000s, so five years okay. there. And that was an interesting shift for me because I went in as the executive chef. Mm. Um, and then I actually moved into food and beverage manager. So what I was doing is I was managing both the front and the back of the house, which was interesting, but also gave me an idea what it was like to, to manage kind of the front side of things too. So, um, yeah, real different experiences. Now... If you had to pick one passion of all of that that you do in a day, what is it? Um, well, I've definitely had a passion for food okay. since I was very, very little. Okay. And if you talk to my mom, she will tell you that. I was okay. always up early. Can I bake something oh, really? um, from a very okay. young age? So I've always had a real passion for food. And I definitely have focused a lot in the pastry section okay. of the food industry. So I've always kind of cooked everything. Um, but I've always loved to make desserts and pastries and baking and that, that side of the career. Okay. Now, 
when you were at April Point, where did you go after that? Uh, April Point, after I left April Point, I actually started part-time with North Island College. Okay. Um, and I did a few um, small contracts with them, teaching in that department. And then from there, I moved to Parksville. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing in Parksville? So Parksville was when I was the chef at um, Pacific Shores. And I opened okay. um, that restaurant there, worked there, and, and loved it. We were actually looking at settling in Parksville. My husband and I thought, you know, let's settle down here. Um, and then what happened is another opportunity in Campbell River came up. So we came back. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you been in Campbell River? Um, so officially now since 2004. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we spent five years up here, six mm -hmm. years actually, and then moved to Parksville for a couple of years. And then we came back and uh, grounded ourselves in 2004, which is when I started with North Island College. Okay. Now, when did you transition into the ownership of Stonehouse Tees? Um, so I officially took over October 2016, so about okay. four and a half years ago was when I officially took over Stonehouse Tees. But Stonehouse Tees has actually been in existence for 25 mm -hmm. years this year, right? That's right, yeah. Wow. So yeah, my good friend Tanya Hofer started the business um, back in 1995 and she was doing... Um, kind of uh, farmer's markets and uh, out of her home-based business. Yes. And she did that for the first nine years of her business. Oh, okay. And then was ready to move to a retail front. So we've been on the corner on 11th Avenue there since 2005. So 15 years at, that, um, at the location there. And there's been expansions at that location throughout the time. Now, what would you say to somebody who is like 12 years old and they really like baking and they're watching the Great Canadian Baking Show or the British Baking Show. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them if they're like, yeah, I think I want to do this? What would your advice to them be? Uh, first, go to school. Um, there's so many things that you learn from a knowledge point of view in school that you don't learn just from a recipe. Oh. And what happens is once you get that foundation, you can cook so many things. So it's like someone that's a really good cook at following a recipe, but if you take the recipe away, they don't know how to cook. So what happens when you go to a cooking school of some sort, you learn the foundational skills, and then you can adapt a recipe. You can write your own recipe. You can build recipes because you have those foundational skills. And I know for me, even though I did a lot of baking at home, nothing compared to the foundation that I got from my cooking school back in Manitoba. Okay. You know, I was watching the Great Canadian Bake Show. Of course, we've had so much time on our hands <laughs> to binge watch shows. Um, and the one thing that I really liked about that particular show is that every time they had people bake something, they would also provide the education mm -hmm. and the knowledge around why you would do certain things and why it turned out the way it did and why it would have turned out differently if you would have done X, Y, or Z instead yes. of A, B, C. So I can understand that mm -hmm. point about the schooling. I'll give you an example. The other day, um, we make fresh scones at Stonehouse Teas, and the other day someone said, can you make them without sugar? And it's interesting because people don't know why the sugar are in scones. And without getting too, you know, baking geeky, <laughs> um, the sugar is actually in the scones to break down the gluten strands so that your scones are flaky. And what happens oh. if you take the sugar out, you're going to end up with very tough scones because the gluten strands will be too strong. And, and, and again, it was a little bit like, sorry, I'm getting, you know, to my baking knowledge, but, no, but there's important things like that that people don't know. Right. So then what happens is you take a recipe, you try to change it, it doesn't turn out, and then you're not happy with it. But when you understand why ingredients are in certain products, yeah. then you can expand and build. And, mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we are going to take a short break. You are watching Insights in Business. My name is Mary Ruth Snyder. I'm the Executive Director for the Campbell River and District Chamber of Commerce. Christine Lillyholm from Stonehouse Tees is our guest today. We will be right back coming to you live from the Tidemark Theatre. Hello everyone, Ken Levine here with just a brief announcement to let you all know how excited I am for my upcoming concert live from the stage of the Tidemark Theatre at 7.30 on February 7th. I'm looking forward to it. It's a virtual concert. You don't even have to get your boots on. Just snuggle up next to the one you love because it's a Valentine's Day concert. Well, I'm going to be singing some of my favorite love ballads and love songs through the ages. All you have to do is go to TidemarkTheatre.com, book your tickets, put your feet up, and enjoy the show. I'll look forward to seeing you all there. 
Welcome back to Insights in Business. Joining me today, Christine Lilyholm from Stonehouse Tees. Now, Christine, what was running a business like before March 2020? Fun and exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, I, I love running business. To me, um, entrepreneurship is something I probably should have done 20 years ago. Oh, I, okay. um, I, really, I really quite love it. So, because of course you shared with us before the break your entire history in a very quick nutshell. And in a lot of the instances you were working for other people. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until you bought Stonehouse Teas that you were doing it for yourself, right? Yeah. So that that's was your right. first venture into the entrepreneur side of things. True, yeah. I feel like I've been running a lot of people's businesses for a long time and been pretty successful at it and always right. wanted to kind of venture out. Um, and what's interesting is before Stonehouse Teas, I'd actually written three business plans for other types of business, but always kind of got cold feet and went, no, I'm not ready. The timing's not right. Yeah. Um, um, mm -hmm. What is the one aspect about being an entrepreneur that excites you the most? I think it's the, the creative side of things. Okay. Of really being able to um, analyze, build, create. For me, I'm a, I'm a very analytical person. I like to look at all angles of things okay. and then take the you know, statistics, the facts, and then be creative and figure out how do we build from these how do we expand okay. from these? And I think being in a, in a community like Campbell River is amazing because there's lots of opportunity to be creative um, and there's lots of opportunities to be collaborative through creativity. Okay. What's the biggest challenge as an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. Probably I'd say turning it off. There's, mm. there's no off. You know, for me, I am living, breathing Stonehouse Teas. I just, I love it. I always want to do it. Um, and it's hard to go, no, I need to balance with life. I need to take a day off. I need to have supper with my husband, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> when I love it so much that I just want to do it all the time. So it's really finding that, that work-life balance, um, I think is really probably my biggest challenge. Are you getting better or worse at setting those boundaries? Um, both. I go through <laughs> stages of like, wow, look at me. I actually took two days off. And then the next week I have no days off. Like, wow, that didn't, that didn't last very long. So for me, it's, um, for me, it's an ongoing challenge. Um, you know, when I do really well is when I go on vacation. Because when I go on vacation, I leave the phone at home. And I literally go unplugged away on vacation and just cross my fingers. Um, but I have an amazing staff, amazing team at Stone's Tees and manager that kind of take care of things for me. So I don't have those worries. But yeah, it's definitely hard to, to turn it off. I would think that being an entrepreneur and running your own business, that it's the finding the right personnel to be your team mm -hmm. is probably the most important aspect of running the business. Absolutely. Is it? Okay. And for me, when I look at, at staff, I'm always looking. Everywhere I go, all the time. Really? Mm-hmm. Because I'm okay. looking for the type of person that would join Stonehouse Tees and really want to be part of it. Okay. So even though I have no positions open right now, I'm always looking because I'm looking for that personality that wants to be part of it. And then, wow, that is a great person. You know, you might be at the grocery store and be like, wow, that person is really have all the skills right. um, that I want as an employee. Hmm, I wonder, you know, where they're going to be looking in the next year or six months, whatever it might be. And do you actually introduce yourself and ask them to call you in a year? Um, lots of times. I'm also, also cautious because I don't have any positions open. Yeah. Um, you know, so I know where, like, I have a team right now that's been with me a long time. It's mm -hmm. very seldom that I have a position open. It's usually a position due to growth right. as opposed to someone leaving. Um, you know, like my manager has been with me, um, four years. So I have a really strong team of people that, that really believe in the business and want to be there. What would be the piece of advice that you would give to, um, somebody who's coming right out of school that considers themselves an entrepreneur? 
they've got no life experience mm -hmm. yet. They're like 18 years old. They're just coming out of high mm -hmm. school. What would be your advice if they see themselves as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur? I, I would start by asking them why. What, what is it that you see in yourself and really be able to self-reflect? And I think okay. you, as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to self-reflect. You have to go, why am I good at this? Why do I want to do this? Why have I chosen this direction? Okay. Because we tend to, as people to do a lot of outward things. And I think as an entrepreneur, you have to do a lot of inward. You have to go, why do I want to do this? And if you can answer those questions, then you're probably on the right path. And then what would your, like, if somebody wanted to go into baking, we know you've recommended that they go to school and they actually do a course because of that foundational knowledge that is so important. But what would you say to an entrepreneur? Would you actually recommend them to do schooling or would you say they should go work for other people first? Um, it depends on the direction you want to go, but I would say you can learn a lot from the people around you and look to learn not just from your supervisor or your boss. Learn from all the people that are around you. Because even though your coworker may not be in charge, there's a lot to learn from them. And I think if you go about you know, your job, your work as a learning opportunity. Um, and even if you don't love it, you know, I know early in my career, you know, I had some jobs that I didn't love, but I looked at them as learning opportunities. And what I'm learning from this job is that I don't want to do this job anymore. You know, that kind of thing. And you, mm -hmm. and then when you reflect on that, you end up not bouncing around jobs so much. You end up actually taking something from every experience that you've had. What was the most important thing you learned on your journey? Um, you know, probably really to always remember the beginning. Mm. And even through my teaching career, through my years as a chef, I always remembered what it was like the first time I picked up a knife. And when you go to cooking school and they hand you a big chef's knife, a lot of people go, yay, I have this. I had a fear in me like, wow, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to cut my hand off. How do I even begin? And if you always remember what that first time was like to start your career, you'll remember new people coming into it and you'll be able to support. Like when I support my team, I remember steaming milk for the first time and making a cappuccino. You know, like, oh, I'm afraid to make this. So when I hire someone new and I say make a cappuccino and they're like, oh, I'm afraid. I know, me too. I was there. Right. And I think it's a really good way to, again, reflect on, on your previous experience. Now, moving forward with, as you moved through, say, the first year of owning the business, mm -hmm. when you got to that first year anniversary for yourself, what did you look back on and what were you looking forward to? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because I reflect every year. Do you? Um, every year I sit down and I do, um, I look back on my business plan. What was my plan? And then what did I actually execute? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I like to do that. Like even for 2020, I had a big plan for 2020. And then what I did is I started 2021. I pulled out that plan and went, what did I accomplish? And I actually highlighted all. I went, wow, you know what? I did well. And, and I think it's really going back to what was your plan, okay. but also having a plan right. as opposed to just going, well, let's hope this year is. What's the plan for this year? What are you, <laughs> what are you trying to? Right. Awesome. Well, speaking of how this year went, we are going to pick that up right after the break, which we are going to take right now. You're watching Insights in Business. We are coming to you live from the Tidemark Theatre. Stay right where you are. One more session with Christine Lilyholm coming up. Hello, everyone. Ken Levine here with just a brief announcement to let you all know how excited I am for my upcoming concert live from the stage of the Tidemark Theatre at 7.30 on February 7th. I'm looking forward to it. It's a virtual concert. You don't even have to get your boots on. Just snuggle up next to the one you love because it's a Valentine's Day concert. Well, I'm going to be singing some of my favorite love ballads and love songs through the ages. All you have to do is go to TidemarkTheater.com, book your tickets, put your feet up, and enjoy the show. I will look forward to seeing you all there. Closer than ever, out in the moonlight, closer than ever.
Welcome back to Insights in Business. I'm Mary Ruth Snyder, the Executive Director of the Campbell River and District Chamber of Commerce. My guest today, Christine Lillyholm of Stonehouse Teas. Now, before the break, we were talking about your business plan and you just finished looking back to see how you actually did in 2020, which, by the way, turned out to be a global pandemic. So what was that like for you looking back at the plan that you proposed, that you drew up a year ago and then not knowing what was coming. Yeah, so it was actually, it was very interesting and very reflective mm -hmm. because I went into January 2020 with, with big plans mm -hmm. and, I, and I kicked off the year um, with an award at, at the Business Awards for Entrepreneur of the Year and we were full steam ahead with a 2020 plan. And then, you know, when March happens, I experienced things that I never dreamt. No one could have ever told me that you'll be closing your brick and mortar doors. I never would have believed it. Um, you know, so going through all of that and looking back on what really happened last year, um, it was a great reflection point for me because when, when the year was going on, you were just going. Um, so yeah, it was nice to, in, in January, that's why I did this. I sat back and went, okay, how, how did we do, you know, what were the adjustments we had to make? So take us back to March 12th. Mm hmm. So, so March 12th, we really heard about this, uh, this COVID thing. Yeah. And and I think for me, it was a little bit like, is this real? Like, is this really happening? Or, you know, and I'd go home some nights and say to my husband, am I dreaming? <laughs> like, are we are we really <laughs> going to do this? Um, you know, and I think for me, the big thing hit when I, it was time to close the doors. And which came very quickly after the 12th. Like it I did. Think it was so, like a couple of days, wasn't it? Um, no, we dragged our feet for 10 days. Did you? Um, okay. We did. We, we put all of the you know, precautions in place, yep. um, but I didn't want to close. I thought, yeah. you know, we're doing the right things. It's okay. And then what was happening is the messaging was really coming out from the community that you need to stay home. Yeah. And I just went, you know what? I need to close my doors because we're encouraging people to stay home yeah. and it's time to do that. But I was also making sure we were ready for the change. Okay. So when we pivoted, we closed our door one day and the next day I went to door to door delivery. Oh, right. Okay. The next day, like just overnight, wow. online orders, phone orders delivered to your door. So we okay. were, you know, between the 12th and I think it was the 22nd we closed, it was all planning. Okay, we're going to close the doors. We know that. How are we going to make this happen? What are we yeah. going to do? Um, how are we going to manage all of those things? Now, how, now, you already had a website in place, but yeah. how long in, during the pivot period did it take you to shift your online presence into full gear? Um, it actually happened pretty quick yeah. because most people would come to the door and be like, how do I get my tea? <laughs> and we just immediately went online store, online store, phoning yeah. your order, that kind of stuff. Okay. What was interesting is I did a lot of training on my online store. So oh, someone okay. would phone and say, I would like to order tea. Would you like to go on the website? I don't know how. Let me show you. And what I would do is all over the phone, I'd say, okay, do you see the screen at the top that says T? Scroll down and then right through to their checkout. And then I'd say, yes, I just received your order. So I actually oh. was doing some training with customers because okay. the goal is to get them trained on how to do the online order. Um, okay. So that was an interesting part that I didn't think I would be experiencing. But again, I, I know a lot of these customers. They've been customers of Stonehouse for 2, 4, 10, 15 20 years yeah so um, they wanted to continue to buy from us mm -hmm. so I needed to find ways to make that work for them and of course everybody was stuck at home and was going to be needing way more tea at home mm -hmm. because they were home in isolation and a lot of them wouldn't have had that skill set right mm-hmm yeah, so for us, it was like train how to do online. Okay. We continued to do phone orders. I got yeah. lots of orders over my social media, that type of thing. Um, and then we just offered curbside pickup and uh, three day a week delivery all through Campbell River. So we would load up the cars and, and away we would go. Some days, three hours of deliveries throughout the community we would do. Now, are you still doing deliveries? We do, yeah. We've okay. continued that. Um, I never stopped because people okay. really like that. What I found mm -hmm. is sometimes my hours of work don't work for other people. So we still do every Friday. We do deliveries Friday afternoons. Okay. And um, through Christmas, we went twice a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. No, what does it look like moving forward? Exciting. 
<laughs> so for me, I look at, you know, you know, COVID obviously had a, a huge impact. It and was it's a, continuing to have And it an continues impact. to yeah. do, and it's been a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. But for me, with every challenge, I look for opportunity. And right. for me, through this whole pandemic, I've been looking at, okay, what are the opportunities from this? And I think early on, you know, when the pandemic hit, I kept thinking, well, it's going to go away. You know, it probably, you know, we'll get over this in a little while. And then I started getting involved with the business resiliency program that the yep. city of Canberra sponsored. And for me, someone said on there once, if we stop thinking it like a pandemic and look at it as a crisis, you will be able to kind of progress more. And that's what I did. I went, wait a second. All of this that I'm doing is crisis mode for whether we have a flood or a fire or any of those things. And what it really helped me do is put things in perspective. Right. And I went, all of this that I'm doing now is preparing for if this were to happen again. And, um, and we just dove in and, and kept going and learning from everything we we're doing. Okay, this isn't working. Let's make an adjustment kind of thing. Three months from now. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking where you're going to be at? Uh, probably where we're at today, okay. except with less rain and a little more sunshine. <laughs> That's my hope. Um, you know, in, in my ideal world, by the fall, we will have customers coming in and enjoying tea again. Okay. Um, again, I don't know. I make my plan. And, and I'd love to sit down January 2022 with you and tell you how we did. <laughs> but, um, but the plan right now is probably by the fall to be able to you know open our doors and welcome people again right now the takeout window is working great it's it's definitely challenging but um it's what we need to do to keep our customers and our staff safe yeah your advice to other maybe entrepreneurs that were only a year or two into their business when the global pandemic mm -hmm. has hit and what would you say to them if they're finding themselves struggling right now uh, if you believe in your business, don't give up. Keep right. going. Look at opportunities that are in front of you. A lot of time we get very focused on what we need to do and we don't stop to look up and go, what help is out there? Okay. As people, we don't often want to ask for help. I yeah. didn't. I thought I can handle a pandemic. Actually, no, I can't. I need some help. I look to the city of Camberver. I look to the chamber. Yeah. You know, I look to, you know, programs out there that I can learn from to help. Um, if you happen to have staff, talk to them. Maybe they have some ideas. How's this working for you? But use the resources around you to keep yeah. going. Because if you believe in your business, you can make it, you can make it through. Okay. Now, in closing, because we are getting very close to the end of our time together, what would you like to say to the community at large? Um, well, I have to say the Camberville community has been so supportive to Stonehouse Tees this past year, the past 25 years. Um, it's been completely amazing. Um, the community collaborations that I do are, are unbelievable. There's so many other businesses that when I say, would you like to, they're like, yeah, sure. And I, and I just, I love that because for me, you know, let's work together. Let's keep building our community. There's one thing to want to build your business, but I actually want to build our community. I want our community filled with amazing businesses and entrepreneurs. So if I can help, please reach out. Awesome. Christine, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and for sharing your insights invaluable beyond measure Thanks so thank you so me. much you're yeah. very welcome you have been watching insights in business coming to you live from the tidemark theater we are here every other wednesday for insights in business and every other wednesday with explore so please join us again next wednesday at one o'clock for explore with president john bowman from the north island college thank you very much for watching have a lovely day